Good morning beautiful boys and girls welcome to the progressive you are in last podcast presentation 18 yo yo you come up till here or you directly jump to professionalism if you haven't gone through one, one 17 and you come to professionalism i tell you you're kind of jumping ahead of yourself if you do 1 to 17 then you know what professionalism means Well, this is a little bit more expanded than that. It's about ethics, morality, appearances, do's and don'ts. What language do you speak at work? How do you speak? How do you address people? We are living in a world where world is such a small place. We are staying in India, working for US, work, staying in US, working for Philippines, and so on, so forth. It's globally a one world now. Even though there are time differences, everybody is working for different countries, sitting in their homes. fascinating world and so you need to be having some tools that's what my intention is to share here to be a professional you're not even sitting in office i'm sitting in my home you see me very shirt and tie but you don't know what i'm wearing underneath so it's a situation where we need to interact globally if it different cultures you need to have a certain degree of professionalism well what does professionalism mean i have distilled my experience and knowledge from reading different different kind of books management books over in this entire series so go through that and if you have some comments leave your comments i'll be happy to answer right so now we come to the final podcast of our corporate um, behavior seminar series called professionalism now this much of this is appears common sense at least but as we all know common sense is not common among common people and this won't make much of a sense to you if you haven't gone through the previous um 17 podcast this is a long this is the final end of a long series of educational podcasts on how to survive and thrive in a corporate environment but professionalism i have kept it at the very end because this is the end result of everything that you have done and studied and hopefully are practicing not just learned and gone about the same person you came you have to change internally you have to change the environment you work in whether you are a leader a ceo or team leader or a, or just a normal person in the lowest rung of the corporate ladder so to speak or an institution it's all the same but as an individual and as a collective we work in organizations or institutions so professionalism applies everywhere so let's see the final ones and like i said to have a firm appreciation of professionalism you got to go through the previous 17 if you don't all the 17 this pretty much follows as a logical conclusion okay so here we go what is professionalism as i define it it's a workplace decorum and expectations it's ethics and morality company and self it's keeping up physical appearances properly professionally and using professional language briefly so professionalism the medium webster def- defines professionalism as the conduct aims or qualities that characterize or mark profession or professional person professionalism encompasses all the modules that we have covered up until now plus that x factor of being a nice person a kind and approachable person at workplace someone who is pleasant personality to work with engage with who is encouraging has a positive outlook creates positive energy of work this is the last of the x factors in being a good professional professionalism has less to do with your hard skill competence you might be a doctorate in physics or quantum mechanics or you might be a nobel prize winner in economics i can't care less it is less to do with hard skill or excellence and more to do with your overall demeanor what's your demeanor as a person one becomes competent person and expert it is expertise only through years of experience okay even if you have got a phd in in hand when you come out of college or university your actual experience will happen in real life when you go interact with other people institutions or when you participate with the rest of the humanity in whatever institutions governance or corporations you may like whereas one can practice being an excellent professional from day one at work important distinction there you don't teach you like this in any company professionalism has 
more to do with and is always about individual choice. Again, we talk of individual choice of how the person chooses to behave, engage and work with others rather than in and rather than their individual nature, their social background, their belief systems, everything affects. This is a conscious choice. This is not an unconscious choice. As a person, you're born in certain society, race, culture, religion, blah, 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 blah. But professionalism has to do with an individual choice of what you choose to behave like. Professionalism also constitutes respecting boundaries of yourself and others at workplace. Not being too friendly, not having too much expectations of uh, returns of favors, etc., etc. We've already spoken of office politics, so we won't go through this again. <clears throat> Always treating themselves and others with respect. As a human, irrespective of the backgrounds, race, color, caste, creed, etc. Respect your boundaries and demand that others of that around you. Professionalism demands one to step outside, quote unquote, of all their personal opinions, emotional baggages from day to day, mood swings, belief systems, judgments. We have spoke of this in critical thinking more, moral high-handedness, and any sense of pride or superiority. Professionalism also demands one to embrace and imbibe higher human qualities, which are common to each one of us as human beings, which are empathy, compassion, caring, being kind and considerate. Professionalism requires one to continually enhance one's own core skills as well. You may be a finance person, you may be a scientist, you may be a physician, you may be a teacher, a professor, an engineer, doctor, whatever it is. You need to improve your core skills also. It's part of professionalism. The professionalism demands more transparency of work from one self to another. Demand the same degree from others to you. Okay? Be a client, colleague, anybody. There are many point, views and articles on the internet about professionalism and what it means. It's useful to go through them, study them, see what's meaningful to you. It's a good habit to learn uh, from the books. Find the highest rated books on goodreads.com and you can buy them at amazon.com or whatever, online stores, and keep yourself updated. There are lots of people coming up with new thoughts and ideas all the time. Workplace decorum and expectations. Decorum means keeping one's behavior in good taste and propriety. Okay, it's conformity of a behavior to conventionally acceptable standards or morals. Each race is unique, each culture is unique. So this depends on the, on the part of the world you are in, on the country you are working from. In West, it's different from Middle East, it's different from the East. So one cannot or should not be at the same way everywhere all the time, even in your home and your per professional life. So behavior is specific to where you are, even at a workplace. They call them a set of do's and don'ts that, allow that you follow and make it a habit of simply because these are appropriate way in every organization and critical to you as a professional. The column has nothing to do with your social background or value systems or beliefs. It has to do with appropriateness of working in a modern organization. A professional decorum is something always expected of you by any organization or company. Okay, this is expected. Your clients and colleagues and management of every company that you ever work for are always silently looking at your overall decorum all the time. These are silent observations by those around you, the lens through which they see you. Getting a job done, keeping a job and getting promoted is based on 85% of one's soft skills, etiquettes, and 15% of one's technical knowledge. This is a Harvard University study show this. So how do we do this? Workplace decorum do's and don'ts. We'll go through a list of do's and don'ts quickly. You can pause it and take notes wherever you want. So these are really commonplace things you should be doing. These are behavior patterns for you to imbibe and carry out. Don't just listen and just discard the stuff, please. It's your life you're dealing with. You will be a better person to hang out with and to work with if you just do all of this. Even though your company will love you if you do this. Okay, monitor the level of conversations. Privacy is difficult. Check the level of your conversations. Don't unnecessarily tell histories about yourself or your current moods. Minimize personal communications, okay? Volume control. When open workspaces are common, everybody has cubicles these days. So they are pretty open, open space of working. So closed door can't be shut. So you don't talk excessively loudly over the phone. Listen first, respond second. When someone is speaking, listen to what is being said. Don't interrupt. Don't have idle gossip. Don't physically touch if it is not appropriate. 
Don't be a backseat driver. Passengers shouting unwanted commands from the backseat in a notch. In the same way, it's not your place to correct or give unwelcome advice or stand over someone's shoulder offering your input. People love giving advices. I understand that. You love giving advices to whoever you think you are wiser than them. Well, apply to you first. Doing this way is better, that way is better. Without asking, somebody asking that advice, don't offer it. When being introduced to someone, always stand face to face. Make eye contact. Never sit down. The late show. Don't do this, please. Come on time for meetings and project and everything else. Be honor everybody's time. Punctuality. Be on time at the office and get out on time at the out of the office. It's just respect for everything you see. Language barrier. In an office, you're surrounded by people. Well, this is specific to India or Europe, really, where there are many, many languages in a common boundary. Even in India and in Europe, given the diversity of languages in India, be sure to use official language. This is painfully obvious. Punjabi finds Punjabi and starts talking Punjabi, or Tamilians find Tamilian and starts yammering off in Tamil, or Malayali, or whoever it is, or Gujarati. So please have common language. English is the official language of communication. Please stick to it. Stand up to your own standards. Don't seek to somebody else's standards. Because co-workers have behaved badly, it's no reason for you to behave badly and start following the suit. Okay? You stick to your own standards. Cell phones. This is, again, very common and told a lot of times, but companies don't stress often enough. As I see it, many points are not even covered there. Don't yell over the phone. Okay? Have a professional ringtone, not bizarre ringtones. Set your phone to busy. Don't check your phones in the meetings. Don't have arguments or debates on the phone. Ever. Not even with your better half. Use voicemail for missed calls. This missed calls is typically very, very Indian. And text messaging briefly. Cubicle offices. Do's and don'ts. Now, this is again common. Some points to remember. Okay? Just because you're a cubicle, don't sit and peep or don't stand behind a person in a cubicle. Very rude. No peeping. No casual talks. No meeting in the cubicles. Go to a meeting room. Knock before entering. Go announce yourself before entering. You covered this before. Never use speaker phone in cubicles. Smells. The people eat all kinds of food from all kinds of cultures and their body smells. Your body smells. It doesn't matter how uh, awesome you think your body is, when you even put on perfume or something, sometimes perfume stinks. Have respect for the kind of smells you're giving out, alright? Ethics and morality, company and self. The major difference between morals and ethics are and that these are more important topics to be covered. Morals are general guidelines framed by society, like we should speak truth. Conversely, ethics are a response to a particular situation. For example, is it ethical to state the truth in a particular situation or not? Morals are concerned with principles of right and wrong. Ethics, on the other hand, right and wrong conduct. Morals are dictated by society, culture, religion, etc. While ethics are chosen by the person or the organization himself. As morals are framed and designed by the group, there is no option to think and choose. Conversely, people are free to think and choose the principles in, of his or her life in ethics. If a company or organization has a set of ethics, one can always choose to do the right thing or not. Morals may vary from society to society, culture to culture. Ethics, which is pretty much common in any culture, okay? Important distinction to think about. Morals make dictates on an individual or a community in terms of right or wrong, do your duty, earn money, support your family, etc. Ethics may dictate what you do and don't do at work in order to earn that money. So one can be morally correct yet ethically wrong. Very important distinction. Morals define absolutes. Ethics are specific to a situation or an institution or a corporation. Okay? So ethics and morality company itself. These ethics are rules of conduct and behavior within a corporate arrangement which one must adhere to. It's usually given in your company manuals. Just read through it. Ethics usually draw upon moral boundaries of right and wrong. So there's this fine and thin line between ethics and morality. Many companies use this use code of conduct. So go through your code of conduct in your organization first. Although an employee is required to work within a code of conduct of a company, you will be required to do that. So go through it fully, thoroughly. 
Morality is a sense of right and wrong, usually derived by a person, based on parental upbringing, society, etc., etc., religious dictates, etc. Morality, therefore, it was closely related to personal value system. Morality usually does not contradict by a written set of company rules or ethics. Okay. However, it is humans within a company who sidestep ethics. This is very common. That's why there are corruptions in companies. That's why there is corruption, bribes, scams, etc. What you read in the newspaper. Why? Because people sidestep and make up their own unwritten ethics and unethical practices and justify by giving reasons of career, job pressures, performance at work, meeting deadlines, sales targets, etc. It is this kind of unethical practices that erode business practices that a company engages with. As a group, although an employee is required to work within a code of conduct, it is always useful you personally evaluate. What do you believe? What do you subscribe to? The ethics are dictated by company. We'll see more of the ethics. Morality is individual. How professional you are is determined by the degree of ethical as well as moral person you are. Since you, as an individual, affect not only your own life, but the company you work for. These days, many companies through their corporate work culture have eroded ethical values. We see more corruption and more bribery and more all kinds of hidden agendas with companies than days before. Okay, This is because of the erosion of value system, ethical values. Ethics and morality are closely related for the individual professional. In order to be a professional, you must be congruent with yourself. You decide what I mean by congruent with yourself. You decide whether there is any contradiction between what you believe as an individual and what the company believes and what they are going to do. Is it in contradiction with one another? Don't join such a company. Find your own path. Next, keeping up physical appearances. Your physical appearances at your work is one of the most crucial ones for being a good professional. I see many people don't dress up properly or properly to work. Keeping up good physical appearances is not merely about looking good, okay? You're not there to show off, but you have to put up a profession, professional attire, the way you carry yourself, how you walk, how you talk, how you behave with people. A regular good physical grooming to work will boost not only your self-confidence, but also encourage respect and admiration from colleagues. Good grooming isn't something that just women do. No, all men need to learn this. Okay, It has nothing to do with gender stereotypes. Increasingly, men's grooming is becoming not only popular, but noticed everywhere in the world, in all cultures, even in India too. Women as a gender need to understand this. As a gender, are more naturally more self-conscious. Okay, you will find rarely a woman coming to a workplace unkempt. Typically, the in percentage, women are more self-conscious, so they have good grooming skills. Men, you need to learn this from women. Groom yourself properly when you're coming. Don't show up as if you're crawled out of your bed in the morning. All right. Habitual dressing styles are a complex interviewing of your upbringing, your peer group, current trends of acceptability. Something was acceptable before, now it's not. It's based around many factors. Your dressing style is also dependent on your personality type, what you want to display to others. Professional dressing style tempers your individual dressing preferences to the degree that you dress moderate, choose clothing designs, colors, styles which match the current trends in official clothing. Be trendy a little, there's no harm in that. Professional dressing also varies from one country and culture to another. Okay? Let's examine some dresses and things in Indian workplace. Think, yes, body orders, do's and don'ts. Please, everybody has a body order, especially strong in subcontinent of India. Because the result of eating too many spicy foods and diets, and putting oil in the hair while coming to office, disgusting. Plus, there is sweat and odors and everything it becomes pungent. And you're sitting in a closed office space. Please, minimize, be conscious of this and work on it. Bad breath. Again, Indian breakfasts are very highly spiced, so you have bad breath problems. Hair oils, stop using hair oils to office. Perfumes, wear mild perfumes. Don't use something that people will faint upon breathing. When comes um, facial hair, current trends influenced by social media, please trim your beards. Just don't make offensive facial hair all the time just because it looks trendy. Clothing, Indian men's clothing, we are talking about Indian culture here. 
formal attire it's okay but take time to keep all these point pointers in mind shirts ties wear ties okay trousers typically formally wear trousers everywhere coats jackets shoes i will go through this, all of these details it's pretty normal you can pause and take notes if you will uh current okay even this you can for this is for women all of these pointers one of the pointers that i would like to point out is the last one here be appropriate for workplace don't show off nobody is interested in seeing your fashion statement or how good looking you are or how sensual or sexual you are or how much cleavage you got please i seen women do this in workplace it's disgusting please be professional you come to work with your remaining colleagues have respect for them professional language we jump to this professional language is covered in communications of course but here are some more pointers which which ties in i feel into professional being a professional right eh? tone of talk your tonality in speech matters a lot humans are sensitive to the tonality of speech speaking in loud voices is threatening even rude use as your figures of speech use metaphor similes or other figures of speech at work is unprofessional this is like this or this is like that or using one liners a professional talks uses simple direct communication don't use similes and metaphors okay avoid bias and derogatory comments or excessive opinion to talk you have a lot of opinions i get that i have a lot of them too just no need to sit and display your biases and comments about everything and anything that's not professional okay you articulate this means you focus on communicating is in more about using complicated words or jargon or acronyms but rather to convey fact factual information we covered this before we just highlighting more here it's more in the communications module use correct grammar if you want to sound professional and like you know what you're talking about it is important to use correct grammatical structures okay uh go through that point avoid using sarcasm taunting please lots of bosses resort to this mr boss stop using sarcasm it's not pretty you, you just showing your your ugly sides avoid jargon and slang don't use much slang l o l l m a o t t y l kind of all this internet garbage so you, last point we we'll end with this use positive diction positive diction means what it is always important to point a flaw or a show in incorrect point view etc but in a calm in a positive diction use a positive language always being part of the solutions not part of the problem suggest alternative don't just say the problem okay always be gentle or kind you may substitute kindness also be big kind to people doesn't matter who you are it's a kindness to you to be kind to others so keep in mind always be gentle and kind and understand the power of language the same words that can you know which is harsh to you can be harsh to another also so be kind to others use the proper language in all your demeanors so i think we'll close with this uh, i've gone through it rather quickly this one because i want to upload this for anybody who cares to <laughs> has the patience to come up till this point and go through all the 18 of them that should give you a nobel prize if you did so but these are useful to you and this is for youth this is for team leaders this is for workers this is for all humans working with other humans in any government any institution any corporation anywhere okay keep this as your go to list this is the reason for me for posting it so that this remains as a reference out there it is both a presentation and a podcast and uh, we can even do this one one on one or on zoom or uh, as a online seminar i am open to it if you uh, as a company leader or something are interested in carrying this out online on a regular basis for your company drop me an email and then we will take it further